Cav Selection, what's going on? Robert Bruce on your radio, homegrown, all things UK. And you know we like to touch base with some of your favourite artists, some of my favourite artists as well. And you know I'm always supporting the future stars, emerging artists from the UK. And on the video chat today, I have someone who I truly believe is like one in a million. She's definitely going to take it the whole way. Her name is Bella, singer-songwriter, UK R&B the whole way. If you thought Drake had Instagram quotables, you haven't heard Bella yet. I promise you. Bella, what's going on? How you doing, sis? I'm good. I'm great. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Thank you for jumping on the video call today. What's going on? I'm living life. I'm, you know, creating... Being me, being an art, being a new artist, mm. which is nice. Um, I'm in that honeymoon phase with my artistry where it's like, oh, everything's roses and, you know, <laughs> we love it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm just enjoying myself, really. How are you? What's going on? Yeah, no, I'm good. Thank you. You know, just controlling things on the radio. Long may that honeymoon period last as well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't want to get to them rocky parts where you talk about in your music in the relationship with the music, you know. <laughs> I, I pray I pray I don't. I pray I don't, but I'm I'm enjoying myself right now. Right no. now I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Good. And I feel like a lot of people on Capital Lecture would have been hearing your music a little bit more over the past couple of months as well. What's it been like yes. hearing yourself on the radio so frequent? I actually don't flog me for this. I try not to listen to the radio. Um is it? but my family members all they do is listening to the radio so i get calls every so often like i just i just heard you yeah um especially from like the uncles and aunties that didn't really get what i was doing <laughs> they're like wait i just thought this was a whatsapp message that your mom sent me he's actually on the radio <laughs> <laughs> so it's been great it's been amazing like i always go on for the premieres and stuff but you know i just try try and tune out you're in your bubble you're in your bubble <laughs> yeah. no that's good and i feel like that's a great point to start to get to know you a little bit more, for people that have just heard the music but don't know you, what is yeah. the sort of short bio? What's the short background? Who is Bella? Where are you from? How old are you? How long have you been doing music? All of that. Okay, the short bio, which is never really ever short, is it? Nah. <laughs> um, um, I am a 24-year-old black girl making music that I think is cool. Um, <laughs> that's literally it. Um, I grew up in North London. I'm from, I live in Essex now. Um, I've just, I started doing music when I was 17. Okay. Um, I had my management meet me when I was 17. I actually um, went to perform at a local festival and I met them there. Okay. And I hear it was they, raining and stuff. So lots of people was, came into your tent. Literally, it was outside and it started pouring down with rain. So everyone had to come in and they were mm -hmm. the people that just had to come in and they saw me and I was like, thank God you're doing <laughs> something. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, it was, it was just a weird, it was like destined, but it was just so, it was so perfect that it was almost didn't feel real. Okay. Um, and they kind of like locked me in the studio for four or five years and said, Hey, make a song. And I was like, I don't know how to do this. What do you mean make a song? Yeah. And so they just put me on to different music, different songwriters, put me in with incredible producers and then like kind of built a hub with them and, um, that's how Bella was really bought, like born. Mm. Um, I, like my managers gave me my name and everything. They were like, "This is who you're gonna be," and wow. I was like, "Okay, <laughs> let's do it." <laughs> so um, that's me in a nutshell, really. Just yeah. a girl that loves singing. I grew up doing musical theatre, so I've just always had an affinity for music. I just didn't know I was gonna be doing. This, this this sort of journey yes. okay cool yeah. that's so interesting so five years just developing we're definitely gonna have to touch on that and you said you did you went to music theater music and theater school what was it yeah i went to i went to a couple actually okay um so i grew up in musical theater school so i went to like theater train stagecoach i was doing west end stuff and then i went to anna fiorentini as well and then mm -hmm. i kind of stopped everything when i was 16 turning 17 to actually pursue the music career the R and B stuff. Okay, so did you you had the family support from early? Obviously, you mentioned the WhatsApp groups and all of that. Yeah. We know what our <laughs> yeah. parents are like. What was your Niger Nigerian heritage, right? I am. So I'm am. sure there must have been the conversations of, are you gonna do law? Are you gonna be a doctor? Or was it just you know straight what's to crazy? music? Yeah. My my 
my mum is the opposite of that. My mum wow. is like an old Caucasian woman. <laughs> <laughs> so she is, she's the one that put me in musical theatre. She was like, I'm going to live vicariously through you. I never got to do any of this stuff. Mm. So go ahead and do it. Like do the gymnastics, do the swimming, do the musical theatre and whatever sticks, sticks and the music stuck. And um, so when I told her that I was going to do music, so she was like, okay, yeah. Wonderful. Bet. Um, she's actually when I was 10 for my birthday she got me a um, a recording studio session so she was like wow. I already know my money's on this it is what <laughs> it is let's go and even like I dropped out of uni she was like cool just show me that this is really what you want to do yeah. um, and I'll let you do it and so I think that's been the biggest driving force in my career is just knowing that I can instead yeah. of, I don't have a, a point to prove all I have to do is just be good do you mm-hmm. know what I mean like just that I don't have to any anyone to like I have no chip on my shoulder in that kind of yeah. regard where I don't have to be like oh yeah I'm gonna show you that I can make money yeah. <laughs> I don't, I just a good environment to sort of yeah. developing I guess exactly just to grow and just to know that you know if I fall I'm getting back up my mom helps me even with funding like nice. be like hey here's some money for overages and stuff <laughs> like <laughs> it's it's yeah she's really really my biggest fan that is so nice to hear, man. Big, big yeah. props to your mum as well. You said you was at uni. What was you doing before you left? <sighs> I went to uni. I didn't want to go to uni at all. Yeah. But then I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go to uni for my mum. The whole African thing. I was like, you know what? Since you've been so good to me, yeah. I'm going to be good and, you know, get a degree <laughs> for you as well. And so I thought, if I'm going to go to uni and suffer, I might as well suffer doing music. Mm. That was the worst decision I've ever made in my really? life. Really? Why? Because they teach you the textbook version of what they think the industry is like mm. for a certain type of person. Okay. And I feel like as I was, because I was going to uni and experiencing the industry at the same time, I was yeah. like, there's a very big disconnect here one i'm not your typical pop artist i was studying popular music okay and then creative musicianship and then two i was like i'm a dark-skinned black woman in the uk doing r&b i don't think there's a textbook (laughs) for this one i do do not think that there's a book yeah there is actually no syllabus on this one i think i'm just gonna have to do this by myself (laughs) i really don't think there's a class on this so I think it was just because there was such a disconnect and they were, you know, teaching things about how the music industry was supposed to be set up. Mm -hmm. Um, It really made me naive to what it actually is and how. And at the time that I was studying, I don't think they were really involved in like the new things like the social media and, you know, doing this and doing that to boost your this. And, you know, they're just the intricate stuff of doing what I do wasn't covered and I was like I'm paying like a lot of money for Mm. nothing (laughs) so my mom was actually in Nigeria when I called I was like hey baby I'm I'm leaving (laughs) (laughs) hey baby I'm not going back (laughs) I'm going back (laughs) so yeah no I had to to can you describe to me what is what if I were you is this song talk to me about this basically every conversation every girl has ever had with their best friends about a nonsense guy that's literally the basis of it like you've told your friend hey hey he's not cute (laughs) and he's not cute for you Mm -hmm. so stop that that's literally what if i were you was a a conversation telling your friend that if this was me in the situation you would be talking the hardest so here i am (laughs) (laughs) when it comes to relationships what is a red flag what would you tell the girls? My biggest one is when you're not emotionally mature or intelli- intelligent. Emotionally intelligent men. I just feel like, <laughs> well, grown up, you say how you feel, okay? Yeah. Don't have me guessing and wondering and going to the mountains to figure out what you want. <laughs> I want you to tell me how you feel. And I don't know, what, what else is a red flag? Guys that are a bit... um. This is for my bad bees. Okay. The guys that are policing you on what you're wearing and how you mm. wear it and what you do, they're not ready for you, babe. <laughs> you need to leave and find somebody who's ready for that lifestyle. Someone that, that can is, hack it, yeah? Someone that can hack it. Because all these guys, they can't they can't hack it. I'm so sorry. Okay. You say you want a bad bee and then you get one and you're shaking. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so we've spoken about from the girls' perspective. What about for your brothers? What are the red flags that the boys should be looking for? Because I don't think you ever talk about this. Women are perfect. So I don't know what it is that you're looking for. <laughs> no, um, you need to find a, a red flag for a woman would probably be, same with emotional intelligence, mm-hmm. um, women that test men. I don't like that. I don't like women that are like, oh, I did this to see what he was going to say. And did mm. it like, just, just be honest. Um, girls that um, are so ego to, not like to give. Okay, okay. This, this sounds right, mad. break it down, but, like, break it down. Like girls that will put their credit on the line for you. That's a that's a that's not someone you want raising your children. Okay. Men. <laughs> this is not someone you want to raise your children. That's not that, a serious no, candidate. Can, you can't take a loan out in my name. It's okay, babes. It's not right. It's not okay. You need to watch out because that one is obsession. That one is not love. That's obsession. I'm She's with you. Be. I'm with you. <laughs> Let's talk more about the music, the artistry. Who were your like artists that? you looked up to that shaped you that really inspired you on your come up or even now today um i have so many okay i'm gonna list off there um lauren hill uh brandy abba okay um michael jackson should have been first yeah um (laughs) stevie wonder uh luther vandross um her love her kalani yeah that's a lot. You give me Beyonce, a lot of names. Beyonce, Destiny oh, cool. Child. Destiny's Child. Yeah, 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 yeah. That whole thing. Um, Indiari, Nora Jones. Um, just so many people. People that are really tone driven okay. were my favorite kind of people because I was like, I can't do all the crazy built in stuff. Mm-hmm. Does that mean I'm not a good singer? But those people would just reinforce that it's about the songs. Okay. It's the songs and how we execute them and how our voice sounds. And um, so, yeah, those tone driven people were my favorite. That's all your lane. Yeah, it's me. And speaking about the songs, I feel like the Art of Conversation is a tape that. I've had on repeat for so, so long. Me and my missus sing it together, you know, like we're artists ourselves, you know, and that's so and sick, that's, you know. You're going to get, I, God bless your union. <laughs> God bless your union. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about the EP. What is this EP about? What does it mean? Where did it come from? Um, The EP, The Art of Conversation, is about having these conversa- hard conversations that you may not want to have. And, you know having conversations with themes in your life, not just people. Um, I didn't actually know what to call it until Mm -hmm. very, very later on um, because I realised that there was, I was was clearly going through something when I was making these type of songs where I was having these conversations in my music um, and it was very cathartic and very, like, it was like therapy for me. Mm. Um, So when I kind of sequenced the songs and realised that, oh, it's, I'm having a conversation with a different thing in each song. Yeah. It just it was fitting to call it the art of conversation. Um, we are really bad at communication as humans. Like we're really terrible. Um, I would love to change that, but even me, I'm sometimes I'm not the best. Um, but it was just nice to, you know, have a song that could, like Cause You Can, yeah. that would summarize my feelings about sickle cell. I didn't even know I had all of these feelings about sickle cell until I wrote that. That so song and listen to it back exactly so i was like wow i didn't know i had this like weird authority thing like I, and then i realized it in my actual life and i was like yeah i really don't like listening to people wow mm. this is um something even with supernova i didn't know i could articulate love like that yeah and um big jeans empty pockets i was talking to music because i was frustrated but i was, i really sat down and um you know deep that there were a lot of unresolved things that I'm not saying in person that I am saying subconsciously in my music. So I think that's what it was about. I think that's why it resonated with so many people because they were like, hey, we haven't really, I haven't really come to address this this yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now I have an outlet. Now I have something that I can listen to and, you know, maybe I'm not ready to talk about it yet, but at least I can listen to this song and, you know, know that someone else is going through. Yeah. Talk to me. I want to talk to you about the general reaction to the EP as well, but you mentioned Cause You Can there, and that's yes. been a song that's connected with so many people. For people hearing it for the first time now, we're just about to play it. Summarise this song for me, where it came from and how it's been received. Um, This song is about 
my relationship with Sigil Cell. Um, the boys, the wonderful sons of Sonics, um, produced this rhythm. And it, I heard it and there was an amazing songwriter called Ty. She had done the melody on it already. And I was like to Maggie, who's part of the duo, I was like, I really want to make a song about Sickle Cell. And I just don't want to tell people that it's about Sickle Cell. I just mm-hmm. want to talk about it. And then he was like, let's talk about it like it's a person. And then I was just like, this, that's easy to talk. Mm-hmm. It's easy to, to conceptualize that. So I just, you know, started uh, talking and it was really, really mad how many people connected with the song, even though they didn't have sickle cell. It was yeah. like, you're talking about this toxic relationship. I mean, like, even Ray Fiasco, when we were doing the video, yeah, he, yeah. I started crying and he was like, I know men aren't, they aren't anything, are they? They're terrible. Really? And I was like, this isn't about a man. This mm-hmm. is about thing. And he was like, oh my gosh, this is mad. So I'm just really glad that it, you know, it hit home for a lot of people Connecting. and yeah, gave people a voice. What has the response been like for you? How's it been? How have you received it? Very, very overwhelming. Um, I just didn't expect it. Like, mm-hmm. I genuinely don't expect a lot. Not to say that I don't think I'm whatever, but I just didn't expect it again with the whole R&B scene in the UK. I was just, um, right now, I'm just making music because mm, I can. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, because <laughs> it's cool. So to have that response was really um, encouraging. It was really like, it really debunked a lot of myths about being in the UK and making R&B as well for me as well. Because I was like, actually, if these guys are ready to ride out and support, then, you know, yeah, there's a thing here. So um, I'm just glad people connected to good music. That's literally it. I'm just glad they connected. And I'm glad that people are, you know, taking in these songs and, you know, really using them as their anthems and yeah. you know because as much as i create music the music isn't for, for me at the end of the day once i've done the song it's it's no longer mine it's for everybody for else everyone, yeah and yeah. so it's always a bonus when the people that you create it for actually vibe grasp with it. it and vibe with yeah. it and they're like thank you and i'm like it's all I'm good it. do you know what's so <laughs> mad like we definitely would have had a bella show if it wasn't for the lockdown i could just picture you know that would have been a madness, right? You know it would have been a madness. <laughs> don't Honestly. worry. I know Boris wants me dead, but yeah. I'm not going to die. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have this show. Yeah. It needs to happen. I'm praying on it. I'm praying on it. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm going to be there. Maybe, I'm not front row. Me, I go, you know, I'm one of them ones. I sit back and I just, just close out, my eyes. Coming. Yeah, I chill out, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly who you are, man. I know it. Yeah. So you spoke about UK R&B just a little bit. I think whenever it's, whenever I talk to people like yourself, it's good to know who you love at the moment as well. So people can yes. almost build this community is what we're trying to do, right? So who are you feeling mm-hmm. right now when it comes to music? Are UK R&B and wider than that, actually? Um, Okay, UK R&B, I would say I love Manila. That's my girl. <laughs> That's gang. Um, I love... I don't know whether you would classify Mira May as R and B, but she, I love her. Yeah. Um, Rebecca Garten. I love Alana Maria. I love um, Tia. No, not Tia Caris. I love, um, but I love her too. She's great. <laughs> but she's. I just thought she's a rapper. Mm-hmm. Um, Tia, uh, Tiana Blake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love yeah, Tiana yeah. Blake. Tiana Major Nine, obviously, guys. She's ours. Whether you want to, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um, there's this new girl called Habiba that she's just come out um, with a song. She's incredible. Nice. Um, there's loads of girls. I'm probably missing loads of people. Um, Kemi Ade, she's yeah. dope. Um, Jamila Barry is dope. Um, just so Scripps many Riley. good names. So many good names in there. So many know. incredible people. Scripps Riley, um, Jack James. Yeah. Oh, just incredible people. And outside, literally, Kalani is the love of my life. Um, that collaboration Ombre. will be deep, you know. We might have to yeah, hear would, it, you know. I would fall on the floor and cry. <laughs> be like, what's going on? What's my life? Um, Ombre is amazing. I love her. I love Jasmine Sullivan. I love, I love everyone. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Just Destin Conrad. He's a new guy and scene. He's incredible. Just people that I just cool. I love cool people. Yeah. Man. I'm like a big nerd inside me. I hear you. Bella I hear you. is a whole entity outside of me personally. I'm mm-hmm. just like, wow, you guys look so cool. <laughs> so, Before you go, yes. what is like the dream? If you were just being out there, you knew it was going to happen. Well, you know it's going to happen. But for you, what's the dream? Like, where would you 
like to be? The dream for me, I don't know why I didn't me- mention Scissor because Scissor's right there yeah. as well. <laughs> my, my dream is to have a career like Scissor's in the sense of, or like Frank Ocean, where the music is just so good <laughs> that I can leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see ya. I want to go for two years, travel the world, relax, go to the mountains, record mm. when I feel like it. And then, you know, have the whole world crying for another album mm. and then get to it when I want and then create bodies of work, not because I have to, but because that's what I was born to do. And, you know, I'm an artist and this is yeah. what I do. That's my dream to be able to drop such a transcendent body of work that it, it doesn't like, like I can just go, I can just yeah. ghost. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know everyone wants me here, but it's like, hi. <laughs> outside yeah yeah i'll be back <laughs> i'll be back I'm go- yeah. i'll be back so yeah i just i just want to make dope music i want to make dope music for other people i like writing as well so i just want to be a part of other people's legacy as well nice. like with that whole pnd and ty dollar sign flex you know just great minds that link up with other great minds to make incredible music that's what that's what my thing is i always oh, tell thing. people like if I had, if my song's in the charts, I want the song above and below t- for me to have like writing credits on it. Mm. Something like that, you know, just to be involved yeah. without actually being here. Hands on. I hear you, I hear you. And that is really good. Yeah. It's going to be so exciting seeing you go and do that because I fully think you'll do it. You. you know, Thank you. 100% think you do it. Before you go, we've got to get into Supernova. Another beautiful song. Talk to Thank me about you. this one. I was in LA and I was working with Alexander Lewis and I heard this. He was actually skipping through instrumentals and I was like, hold on, sir, that one um, is amazing. I need to write on it. And my friends were there and they were like, you know, you write heartbreak songs, right? And I was like, yeah. They were like, you can't do that on this song. This (laughs) song sounds like the clouds. And I was like, okay, cool. So I wrote about love and the purest love that I know is for my mom. So I just, you know, I wrote about my mum and um, this amazing writer called Rush from LA. He came in and made it more universal. That's why he added the man. Cause if it was up to me guys, you would have <laughs> gone a looking, right? <laughs> but, um, he made it universal and he made it amazing. And it's one of my favorite songs that I've created to this day. So, yeah. Thank you very much for hanging out this afternoon. Big fan of this EP, big fan of you in general. I'm sure you know, we got to do this again. You got to come into the studio and we'll chop it up. Boris, let me yeah. go to have to extra. I just don't understand it. I'm ne- I'm negative. COVID, I've done the vaccine. I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs>